right now. All right, we've got Jennifer Crotch. She's sitting down against Josh Frankel as they get ready to go here. Ooh, nice start there. Pelt collector for Josh. That's a really good turn one play. You know, the, the difference between playing that on turn one versus playing that at any other point in the game is just massive here. That's right. That's a pass wall adept for Jennifer. Pass wall adept has performed actually kind of good, pretty well for me uh, thus far. And I've even had to put it in a bunch of just control decks. And I'm like, well, it kind of blocks. And then later on, can just finish the game even, th even if the board stalled out. I usually end up racing my deck. Have you found this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I almost it, always it, come close to decking myself. I've been really impressed with Adept alongside Child of Night to pad my life total when I'm in range of like my there opponent's reach. Uh, I, I also just like the 1-3 body. I think 3 toughness is you know one of the few ways at 2 mana to stop something like a uh, fresh face recruit. By the way, look at this curve out here from Josh. My goodness sakes. Pelt Collector just piling them up right now. Yeah, this is a good start here. This is a fantastic start. He's got the Rosemane Centaur here on turn three after the one drop, two drop start. Also, he went in reverse order. Rare, uncommon, common. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that one drop right now has three power. That two drop is a first striker with two power, which is great in this format and will make a lot of the, uh, the token production really powerful out of his deck. And, you know, Rosemane Centaur, a 4-4 is nothing to scoff at. Overgrown Tomb here for Josh. Josh has to be careful here, though. Uh, with Jennifer passing the turn with uh, Demir Gilgate, Swamp, Island, Island, it kind of r smells like an artful takedown. Turns out to be a uh, Whisper Agent here. Whisper Agent for Jennifer. Yeah, so now she has good blocks here. Whisper Agent has been performing very well for me also. Kind of does a lot of the things that I want to do in the format. Yeah, I think just for this reason it's quite good. The fact that it yeah. combines with these high toughness creatures to give you really nice double blocks. Uh, and oftentimes you can punish your opponent and uh, put them in a situation where they're trading down. And look at that right there. Trading off for a Rosemane Centaur. That is right where you want to be. The downside for Jennifer from her seat, though, is that Pelt Collector is now powered up with three plus one, plus one counters, having gotten one at every option. Every time that there could have been a counter placed on the Pelt Collector, there has been. That's impressive. Yeah, a really powerful one mana card. Speaking of really powerful, here's Watcher in the Mist for Jennifer. She's going to get a counter on her Phantasm. That thing's almost powered up as well. But Watcher in the Mist, boy, that's a card, my friend. Yeah, it's a card I've been really, really impressed with. Same. That's, that's what I want. Like That, that, that card, I, it's weird because you might want to take it a little bit for granted. In fact, you maybe even have a little spite towards it because it has an extra blue mana on it now <laughs> as compared to its friend Cloud Reader Sphinx, which is a very similar card. But I'll tell you what, you really get a feel for how powerful that effect on that kind of body is at common when you play this in this format where it truly shines. I, I've just found Watcher in the Mist to be a card I want about as many as, as I can get my hands on, and it's been hard to get my hands on any of them. Yeah, I think the, the addition of the Surveil triggers really just pushes this card into yep. you know, a whole other realm. I think you know, the Cloud Reader Sphinx was already incredible, and this is even better, despite being harder to cast. 
Interestingly, Jennifer, uh, she also has a one mana 4 4 on the battlefield. We've she been does. talking about Pelt Collector here, yeah. but uh, the Phantasm. She's like, nice aggro card, check me out. <laughs> and look at this, it's holding back the entire board, as well, of course, as the, uh, the Watcher and the Mist, but she doesn't even have to bother putting that thing at risk. And think about being in Josh's seat for this game. He went turn this one is Pelt absurd. Collector, turn two. Sunholm Solwer, turn three, Rosemane Centaur, and his opponent is playing Demir and is at 20 life right now. Is it 20 life has played an uncommon, <laughs> common, 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 common. Like, she's just running out normal stuff that you'll get in any Demir deck, and she's just fully stable, and with this play, has now moved ahead on board. She's got one of the best uncommons in the set with Murmuring Mystic, and then she also put out a House Guild Mage to help fuel action out of her draw steps going forward. Unbelievable stuff from Jennifer here facing down the 1-2-5. That was his curve, by the yeah. way. One <laughs> mana rare, two mana uncommon, five drop on turn three, and she just shrugged that off, hasn't taken a single point of damage. Go Demir. I know where I want to be. <laughs> Always. In this, in this equation. Always. That's, <laughs> since the original Ravnica, there's nothing I want to be yeah. but Demir. And Josh sees that things don't look good for him going forward. He has a lot of targets here that he would like to point this deadly visit at. He ends up pointing it at the house guild mage, fearing the ability for her to say on upkeep. Yeah, I, you know, that's the thing. Is now Jennifer could start controlling her draw step with that house guild mage. In addition to controlling her draw step, she's also going to be growing that phantasm. And then he has no idea what other type of... Uh, surveil shenanigans might be going on in her deck. And I, I imagine there's quite a bit more. Ah, it was Price of Fame, by the way. Not Deadly Visit. <coughs> Price of Fame, very similar card to Deadly Visit, but better in every way. Yeah, I mean, it gets to <laughs> cost one less black mana. Yeah. You know, sometimes it only costs two mana in very, very specific situations. Yeah, it's just much it's better. An instant. All right, now we have a little fight here, though, because Josh Frankel has said, all right, if we're going to settle in for a slightly longer game, I've got a Beast Whisperer here, and that can fuel my late game really well. But right away, Jennifer Krotz fights back with Notion Rain to fuel her draw steps here. So I like her position still. She's still ahead on board. She still has a flyer that can keep on attacking. That Phantasm is just outpacing everything on the ground, and Josh is going to need to string together multiple creatures over the next few draw steps. The good news for him, though, Beast Whisperer can do that. Like, if he has a creature in his hand or draws one, he could play two per turn, never miss another land drop for the rest of the game. Jennifer getting a lot of value off this notion Boy, right here, you ain't though. Kidding. Yeah, two cards, surveil two. A plus one, plus one counter on a bird? Yeah. Bird, Is that good for three mana? <laughs> plus one, plus one counter. What the world? <laughs> By the way, nail polish, perfectly matching the sleeves, that is on point. That is really <laughs> you on see point. That? I like that. <laughs> I'm impressed. That is. That's coming prepared for the tournament, I'll tell you that. Boy, she's going to keep both of these, too. So that can't be good news for Josh Frankel. He's got to be like, really? Notion Rain, keep both. Oh, my goodness. It looks like one of them is Find Finality also. Oh, you're completely correct. <laughs> so what would that do on this board? Well, it would pump the uh, Watcher, and then there would be the Mystic, the Phantasm, and the Watcher against nothing on the other side of the table. Would you consider that good? I would. She needs green <laughs> mana, though. Like, as an expert in the booth. <laughs> All right, so that's <laughs> ridiculous. Also, she could just use it to grind. That's true. Right? Like, honestly, find is underrated as heck. It really is. Like, she could get back a house guild mage plus whatever else is in her yard I can't see and just start going to town. It looks like she's perhaps on that plan here as well because she attacked with the phantasm. Oh, wait a minute. What else does she have? All of the lights? Oh, <gasps> she does dazzling lights for Jennifer <laughs> Krotz. Oh, man, she is blinding Josh, Fra Josh Frankel with value at this point. Oh, man. Oh, wow. Yeah, so now both of those creatures, the Pelt Collector and the Sunholm Stalwart here, going to die. 
the Phantasm will live. Boy, I don't know if I can take much more of this. Josh with the perfect curve, and Jennifer has just laughed at it. She is in crush mode at this point. Josh does get to have his most important creature left over, the Beast Whisperer. That's one of the only cards that could allow him to come back. And I love this from Jennifer. She's just going to go for fine. She doesn't have the green mana anyway, and she's going to set up now drawing two spells now, plus her draw step next turn and have all that mana to use it. Oh, and by the way, <laughs> bird. She's getting a bird, too. The bird. Go. Get that bird. All right, Josh. Start things off with a creature. Siege Worm for full price. <laughs> well, you know, that's big. It's it not is. as big as the Phantasm, but it's got keyword big. It's not as big as the Phantasm. It, right? Isn't yeah. it a 6-6? Six, six? Like, it is. It is a 6-6. Six, six. He's taking five in the air from the Burbs plus the, uh, the Watcher. And it's unblockable. <laughs> Game over, right? Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Make the Murmury Mystic unblockable and just win the game on the spot. Yep, that seems to be the kind uh, of into it plan here. Wow, I cannot believe. Like, I totally believe that she won this game, right? Like, she had a bunch of good cards, things went well. I cannot believe how easily she won that game after that start from Josh. Yeah, that that was mind blowing to me. I've. You know, it is hard for me to imagine a scenario wherein I lose a game where I have that kind of start. And I, I don't think Josh even had a chance. Uh, it, Jennifer just, with that sequence of cards, I mean, played beautifully. Wow. Yeah, she just, she just yeah, calmly just navigated through that. Interesting here as well, it looks like Josh has put himself on the draw here. And S she may be punishing the ever-loving heck out of that because she just played a Demir Spy Buck. Which is a card I've been extraordinarily impressed with. I don't know how happy you've been with Demir Spy Buck, but... Uh, I love it. Yeah. Actually, it, it I hate it. I actually so hate big, it. so big, so fast. The Menace, in addition to the flying, Which really just... Which is like, just, come on. Yeah, like, they, they have what? They have, like, a spider in play yeah. against your, like, flyer that's yeah. taking away and it doesn't even do enough. Well, I mean, it yeah. really has flying. Yeah. Like, <laughs> does it have horsemanship, too? Like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I hate that You take that a card. quarter and I'm scratch in the text box, there's shadow in there. Yeah, I'm just mad. Uh, yeah. I'm mad at Demir <laughs> Spybug. You know why? Because one of my first experiences was against it. By the way, here we go. Get on that Spybug and ride. It's already a 2-2. Two -two. Thanks to Notion Rain. My opponent had a Spybug with two plus one plus one counters on it. I thought, okay, that's a problem. Mm -hmm. But I had played a Rosemane Centaur. I had... Uh, another big creature in my hand, you know, a siege worm or something. I thought, okay, we're going to have a little race here. You know, I'm going yeah. to be able to do it. And my opponent played Doom Whisper, And they had 18 life. <laughs> and they cashed in 16 of that 18 life to put plus one, plus one counters for each two life on their Demir spy bug and said, kill you. And I'm like, is this real? <laughs> <laughs> we were playing magic up until you played that. So I'm, I'm mad. Hey, look at this. Look at this. There's their hitch clobber clues. And then their spy bug's like, LOL. Don't care. Yeah, when you play your three-mana sideboard card that's good against creatures with flying and your opponent's two-mana flyer can cleanly ignore it, that's a bit of a problem. <laughs> what is going on here? Chat, what is, what is happening here? Oh, so J Josh did not have the mana to cast this recluse here. Uh, I believe Josh used flower to find a forest. Oh. Then... Uh, Oh, no, I guess he used the flower on the turn. No, no, no. Oh, you know okay. what, it Is that what it was? No, that's not what it was. Okay. Jennifer did not draw her two cards from Notion Rain. Oh. She she did surveil. Okay. But she forgot to draw the cards. So they just had her draw them now since the library was the same anyway, and she was tapped out. Yeah, the, the Which, of course, you're, you're, you're not allowed to do. I mean... You resolve the spell, you have to draw the cards. Mm -hmm. 
the situation you were just describing with the mere spy bug and Doom Whisperer, Which I'm is going to completely uh, unfair. I'm going to blame Doom Whisperer for being the more unfair half of that equation. Well, spy bugs would <laughs> killed me. That's that's fair. Did, it applied <laughs> lethal damage to my face. <laughs> Hired poisoner. Very good card against <coughs> what Josh has got going on. Josh, by the way, that's Soulbush, streamer. If you've ever seen him streaming on Twitch, I haven't seen him streaming in a little while. But all right, again, a big play for Josh. This time earlier in the game too. Beast Whisperer here for Frankel is absolutely the type of card that can power him to a victory. Now the question is, does Jennifer have an answer for it? Because if you go back to the other game, she didn't actually end up removing it. Right? She just ended up attacking and, and killing him with her superior board state. But sh she didn't actually reach out and say kill that thing. So she may not have that many answers for it. Yeah, Jennifer's deck, while very good, does not have a lot in the way of removal. Uh, Jennifer needs to lean on cards like Severed Strands here. Uh, no Price of Fames, no uh, Deadly Visits. And when you let your opponent untap with a card like Beast Whisperer, that can cause some very serious problems for you. Blood Operative for Jennifer. That's a nice one. Makes racing very difficult, though it is not an answer to the Beast Whisperer. Looks like she's just going to attack with the Demir Spy Bug this time. She could send in the Hired Poisoner. She's got kind of a neat combo here, too. And there we go. We, we see Severed Strands is going to take down the Beast Whisperer and also put the Blood Operative in the graveyard, which, all told, isn't the worst place for it to be. No, I mean, it looks like Jennifer's deck has plenty of Surveil cards, yeah. so she can easily return that back to her hand by playing, paying three life on a future turn. The combo I was mentioning, too, is she does have Dazzling Lights, which can go really well with that higher Poisoner to act as kind of a pseudo-removal spell if it were to get into combat. Yeah, the, the Lights are a card that, uh, you know, when I first read it, I thought to myself, here's a card I probably won't ever play. But uh, the times where I have played it have correlated heavily with how many Hired Poisoners and or Gorgons I have in my deck. And there you see the Gorgon and the Hired Poisoner on the table at the same time here. <laughs> <laughs> It's also just a cheap instant speed surveil, you know, which can come up somewhat often. Mm -hmm. You know, pumping creatures like the spy bug or getting a, a trigger on end step for your disinformation campaign or something like that that maybe the opponent wasn't expecting. It's very rare I'm lucky enough to have disinformation campaign know, in my deck. I know. <laughs> I think I'm in love, though. Like, oh. seriously. Double phantasm here for Jennifer Krotz. Wow. Her deck is nice. That's dead weight to kill the Gorgon. And boom, in comes the team. Three more damage, so nothing too crushing here from Frankel's side. But if I'm sitting in Josh's seat, I'm just going, how do I even get out of this at this point? Like, it doesn't look like he's going to be able to overpower Jennifer on the ground, right? He has no real board state at this point, and even a card like Rosemane Centaur doesn't look like it's going to be able to just dominate. And he's taking damage in the air from the spy bug. And if I'm thinking about the cards that Jennifer can draw, I like her chances better, right? She's, she's the one playing Notion Rain and that type of card. The Beast Whisperer, yeah. already in the graveyard. It's in the yard. Franco looks like he's got a Siege Worm here. Okay. That could help get things going, but even one Surveil trigger here for the Thoughtbound Phantasms just means that that Siege Worm trades off for one of those. You know, if uninterrupted. Siege Worm, a card that's impressed me a lot. Me too. I like it. Format. Me too. But it's always a card that plays better than it reads. But you know what I really like? Demir Spy Bug. Every card on the other side of the battlefield. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like the Poisoner trades for it. I mean, sure, you take a hit, but Jennifer's at 18. She doesn't care. Wow. 
these have been some lopsided matches so far that you and I have watched. Not that this one's over yet, but yeah, I advantage bars over on the left there, pretty, pretty strong. Yeah, I, oh, there, there are absolutely strings of cards that Josh could draw here that could get him back into the game. It's just very unlikely. It's going to take a lot of work, a lot of tight play. Ooh, looks like there's a Vigor Spore Worm there yeah. for Josh. Another big body. It is. He, he's starting to build up a bit of a board state here, at least. He has Undergrowth 2, so he'll get a trigger, but this is just so unlikely to be the way that he actually wins the game. That said, 5-5 five, five Trampler and a 6-4 now. Okay. You, you're starting to get my attention. I think Jennifer does have Dazzling Lights in, she does. Uh, in hand right now, and that's going to be the best Dazzling Lights ever. It's going to shrink a creature. It's going to grow both these Phantasms. It's going to grow that Spy Bug, and it's going to get, allow her to pay three life and uh, rebuy a creature from her graveyard. <laughs> yeah. That's also going to reduce the Recluse's power down back down to zero. It did, get, it did get plus two, plus two from the Vigor Spore Worm, thanks to the two creatures in the graveyard for Frankel, but uh, yikes. Now she can just block with the Poisoner or even with everything. And now she's going to pay the three life to get back the blood operative and the value train continues to roll on as Josh Frankel stands at the station and waves goodbye to it. Jennifer Krotz sitting in the restaurant car about to order up a nice dinner. <laughs> I like that image. Josh falls down to nine. As Jennifer continues to, uh, wow, she just found Watcher in the Mist, Jake. That's our favorite. That is <laughs> right on the list. <laughs> Extraordinarily jealous of Jennifer at the moment. This is where if you're playing on Magic Online, your whole screen is just filled with triggers. Trigger, trigger, trigger. Boy, she gets to play a 3-4 flyer. She gets a surveil two to set up her draw, her future draw steps, and she gets three plus one plus one counters on her creatures. <laughs> like, if I'm sitting in Josh's seat, I'm kind of thinking, like, am I not supposed to be the one getting plus one plus one <laughs> counters in this equation? Like, you're playing blue black, and you're picking up all these additional counters. Why don't I get some? Oh, the thing is, though, in order to do that, she has to uh, draw cards and manipulate her library. Right. That's right. <laughs> that's a big punishment. That price of fame for Frankel, and furthermore, does it matter? It is perhaps the first step in an equation to victory. I mean, that price of fame can deal with the spy bug. Uh, it can find Josh an answer to that watcher. Uh, then there is, you know, the possibility that Josh could string together a number of cards that could get him back into this game. Okay, stage one for Frankel. Kill a flyer. He's going to wait. Oh, she has it. Just information campaign oh from Jennifer Crotz. Boy, she has it all. She's going to draw a card for us. Josh, to discard a card. He did have an additional plane, so it looks like he's flooded out a bit here. Jennifer's deck looks like the most fun yeah. anyone has ever had. Yeah, I want to drop and just <laughs> it's like play that instead. There's that price of fame, though, to kill the spy bug, or will it? Josh did play with fire a little here. There's numerous playable counter spells in, in Demir, three of them that people play in Sealed. But he dodged a bullet here. 
Spy bug down. You take three, you're at three. And then she still has a blood operative, right? No. I guess she's just going to play out the house guild mage. That house kill mage represents a lot of power because the yeah. surveil on that card can allow her, both for phantasms to attack. That's right, but you know what? <laughs> Josh knew that, and so did she, and Josh is going to extend the hand. That's Jennifer Krotz winning two games 2-0 and improving to 2-0 here. Early on day one here at GP Montreal. Welcome back to the booth. I'm Marshall Sutcliffe. That is Jacob Van Lunen. And, uh, yeah, two, two kind of swift 2-0s, uh, you know, from our first two feature matches. I'm curious to see if things even out as we move through the day or if maybe this is just like one of those lopsided formats where sometimes people just have a really good deck, you know? Yeah, I think that uh, I think we'll see deck building come into play a lot here, especially as we get into these later rounds. I think, you know, finding those synergies, especially those surveil synergies in your sealed pool is something that you really want to do. But... That also creates the problem of incredibly difficult games of Magic to play because you're going to get into these control matches where certain cards matter, certain cards don't, and being able to make those choices, being able to uh, foresee how games are going to look, that's going to be really difficult. Okay, we've got more Time Walk Magic for you right now. Let's head on down to that. Robert Lombardi versus Jack Penny, and it's like they're underway here as we come in to game number one. Looks like Robert has access to Dawn of Hope in his deck. That is one of my favorite cards to play with and one of my least favorite cards to play against in the sealed format as somebody who really likes to play control strategies. Ooh, Jack Penny opens up House Guild Mage to a righteous blow and get out of here. He used it. That was a big risk from Jack there. And I think he's going to regret that attack because going down the line, House Guild Mage has a lot of really great uses. More than just getting in for two, that is. Ooh, disinformation campaign. What, do they just hand one of those out when you walk in the room? What's going on? <laughs> I didn't get one. <laughs> I would have liked to, somebody to have handed me one of those. It just makes me feel better having one. Flight of Equinauts, uh, Robert Lombardi is going to discard the eight mana spell not coming down super soon. Chamber Sentry now, though, from Robert. I've really been loving this card. I actually had it in my pre-release sealed. I was Boros, mm -hmm. and, you know, they have those seeded guild packs for the pre-releases, so you're really incentivized to stick in your guild, which is exactly what I did. And I just played it. <laughs> I was just like 2-2 two, two for 2, go. Sometimes it kills stuff. I mentored onto it. That's good. sweet. Yeah. Card's just good. And if you can put more than 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it by casting it, big thumbs up. Really good card. Yeah. I've rebought it from my graveyard. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. These. Okay, Capture Sphere is going to take care of this Rosemane Centaur, meaning that Jack takes no damage for the turn. Land number five for Jack. Ooh, the perfect five here. He's got Watcher in the Mist. That's going to let him pick up Disinformation Campaign, set up his draw steps. He just put another Watcher in the Mist on the top of his library. He didn't pick up his Disinformation Campaign. Well, that's okay. He wouldn't have time to cast it next turn because he's going to have to it's cast really another Watcher anyway. It's really not okay. <laughs> it's really not, Jake. It's really not. I'm I agree. I'm super <laughs> bummed about this. Jack, no. <laughs> oh, man. Once again, the value train has left the station. <laughs> Jack had his ticket. He did. He had his ticket to Value Town. It's like he went to the airport. He had the ticket for the plane. He, had he was it. sitting there. They're boarding, and he was just sitting there like he sit up on fell hands, asleep. You know? <laughs> Oh, man, I'm so sad that <laughs> campaign's just sitting there. <laughs> All right, well, the good news for him is that he still gets to get in there with his Watcher in the Mists. Ah, there we go, Jack. Yes, yeah, so that's why it didn't matter. That's what I was trying no, to explain. No, it did matter because now <laughs> he's had to buy another ticket <laughs> on the value train. <laughs> we'll see if he cashes this one in. You never know. You know, he could have had a two-drop that he could play this turn plus the campaign, then That's play true. the Watcher. You know, there are, like, long-term lines of play. 
<laughs> where you set up repeated activations. Sometimes it is better to skip one. It, seriously, like it may not have mattered in this case because uh, he may have just been like, I'm going to play Watcher in the Mist no matter what. But in any scenario, you want to give yourself the opportunity to maybe draw a card that would say, oh, I could play a House Guild Mage plus my disinformation campaign or something like that. Absolutely. You don't want to be results oriented with those type of decisions, right, Jake? I agree wholeheartedly. <laughs> All right, we've got another Rosemane Centaur. Uh-oh, it's your boy. Venerated Loxodon here from Robert Lombardi. Now, this isn't the insanest one I've ever seen, but still, the card's just absurd. Yeah, it's it's the card I, I think it's the rare I've opened most Must be so nice. far, and uh, I'm very happy about that. Yeah, good for you, Jake. <laughs> Glad somebody's opened a sweet rare over and over and over again. I had a draft where I opened it in two different packs. <laughs> Did you pass them both? No, you no, took I didn't. Them. Right, you <laughs> I took both out. of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like elephant with green stuff on his hand. I'm definitely taking this card. In. <laughs> All right, here comes two Watcher in the Mist. Jack Penny, perhaps looking to set up a race of some sort here. And that does look to be what he's doing. Deadly Visit is going to kill the Rosemane Centaur. It's got a plus one, plus one counter on it. So a five, five Vigilance says bye, bye. Still leaves Robert with a formidable board here, though. He's got seven power. Ooh, make it 11. Crushing Canopy in the main deck. I love it as a main deck card, by the way. Look at all the targets he had this game. He could unlock the Capture Sphere, or he could kill one of these Watchers. He's deciding to be aggressive, though, after that big attack from Jack. And I kind of like it. I like it a lot. Yeah, this is going to make Jack really pump the brakes and have to slow down a fair bit. District Guide now from Robert. Also worth noting, Robert, he's got some reach going on here. Uh, with that sentry on the battlefield, that's three points that can go to the dome here. Uh, if Robert's able to draw some other type of card that can directly affect Jack's life total, it, it, Jack's in a world of trouble here. He really is. He decided to be somewhat aggressive by using his removal spell and killing the Watcher in the Mist, and that crushing canopy completely threw that game plan off because otherwise he was relatively safe. He doesn't expect to face a lot of haste or anything like that from Robert. So even if Robert played like, attacked him and took, played like a big card like a Siege Worm, he could still probably manage that and maybe even just straight up race it. Now he's way behind in the race, and that sentry looks really scary. So Jack has a lot of work to do all of a sudden. Let's see what he can do. We know he has dis disinformation campaign in his hand, but that's the kind of card that can be a little slow in these situations. Ritual of Soot. So that's going to deal with both the Sentry and the District Guide here. Nice. Pretty good? Yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, he's still not in a great position, though. And highly incentivized right now to play this disinformation campaign. Jack doesn't know that, but Robert's last card in hand is Experimental Frenzy. Whoa. Now, this is the future site. That's right. You can't cast cards from your hand. I think it's just about the best last card you could have in your hand it in is this sealed format. Unreal. So the good news for Robert though is that he's ahead anyway. He's gonna be able to trade off one of his creatures on the ground, get Jack to one. Well, that's not really what he wants at this point. Just going to play an 0-4 reach wall. But wait, there's more. And there it is. Experimental Frenzy. So he gets to look at the top card of his library at any time. Which, by the way, there's always annoying players that say, like, in response, I look at the top card of my library. It's like, you don't need to do that. Yeah, you can yeah. just look. <laughs> just look whenever you feel like it. Yeah. And he can play cards from the top of his library. Now, he cannot play cards from his hand anymore. Here's the double block that we talked about a second ago. So one Watcher down. And he goes down to one life. But the problem is, is that he's also facing down a 4-4 versus a 3-4. So he automatically needs something to have to avoid chump blocking. And the Experimental Frenzy is probably going to go off. I mean, that thing does dumb stuff. Yeah, the card has the potential to just take over a game by itself. Uh, I don't know if you've gotten to play with it yet. 
but I have. I have also a few times. And uh, you know, reading it, I was impressed. Getting to play with it, even more so. Yeah, it, 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 situationally excellent card. It also can be too slow and be really annoying, and you don't want it. But mm -hmm. like you said, last card out of your hand. Oh yeah. All right. Well, he's going to use invert to kill the wall and attack. So he's got to have something. Yeah, I'm surprised that the invert could have been used to switch the power and toughness on Watcher in the mist, which would have allowed it to trade with that venerated Loxanon. Well, he's taking him again. Jack is very aggressive here. Hunted witness off the top, but he gets to look at the next card again. And this is the problem here. <laughs> oh, no. He's got a scout and a land, so that's three cards he's already gotten off of it. And finally, the fun train stops there. He's going to force a chump lock once again. But Jack, boy, with that attack with the Watcher in the Mist, trying to make a race out of this thing, and it has worked out terribly for him both times. If he would have left the Watcher back, he could have had a double block there mm -hmm. and gotten rid of the venerated Loxodon. Oh, I, I see some powerful cards in Jack's hand here, though. Unfortunately, it seems like his man is not cooperating well enough. Yeah, he's going to spin his wheels here a little bit. Play Chemister's Insight, which is a good card, but he needs a lot more mana to make all this stuff work. He's facing down three different lethal threats at this point. Is there any way out for him? With just that many lands, it's, it seems really tough to me. I can't, I can't see any way out. The Skyline Scout getting up in the air creates even further issues. There's a Child of Night, but still just facing lethal. So draw your card for the turn, but remember, you can't cast them. Look at the top card of your library. Play a Portcullis Vine. Look at the top card of your library. Play oh, Luminous Bonds, just in case there was ever any doubt. Uh, and I see what, what uh, Jack was going for there. He had six damage in his hand, but... All right, looks like we're going to have to cut this one a little bit short because behind us, the uh, pairings are just about to go up. Lombardi did end up winning that match, uh, just for those of you that are watching at home. But like I said, we've got all of our friends behind us here milling around, and that means that we're getting pretty darn close to pairings and the next round coming. So we're going to take a short commercial break. While that happens, when we come back, though, we'll have more live magic here from Montreal. Don't go anywhere.